This episode is brought to you by Hub24, whose purpose is to connect advisors to innovative solutions that create opportunity. They're massive supporters of advisors, in particular those going solo, uh, and they're one of the early players in the managed account space, and, and their epic functionality in that area, as well as their commitment to user experience, has led them to become a market leader in terms of advisor satisfaction. I can speak from personal experience when I say their BDM team are total legends and they're there to help you work through the best solutions for your business. So you can check out more information at hub24.com.au. This episode is also brought to you by Centuria, who are a boutique ultra high performing fund manager. They've won pretty much all the awards there are to win. Uh, They've got a bunch of five star rated funds and they're heavy into technical support for advisors around their products and strategies. On top of that, they're just an awesome group of people and they've got a dedicated team there to support you. And if you haven't already spoken to the guys at Centuria and heard about what they do, do yourself a favor and reach out. We have Mike Weeding and Sean Brennan. I got that right. I keep on saying reading to myself, so I'm like, oh, I better get Weeding right. You get it right. Yeah, Yeah, it's good. And it's Michael as well, but Mike, he goes by Mike. Well, Michael, if I'm in trouble. Oh, (laughs) is that the wife or the mother? (laughs) It, would, it was a mother. Oh, it was yeah, a mother. That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You knew. You knew yeah. it. Did you? Did you have a special name for when you got in trouble? Uh, no, I think it would just be Sean Patrick. Maybe I <laughs> oh. get my middle name thrown in there. Yeah, that's a that's a good sign. Yeah, classic move. Oh, mine was all in tonage. It was Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you know? I um, years ago, a num- numerologist did my numbers right when I was about ni- about nineteen or twenty, and he said to me, um, "You should stop using Mike." You've got to use my call and more money will start to come your way, wow. right? So, um, you know, so I'm always conscious of going, well, maybe I need to stop using Mike and start using Michael and see if he was actually true. See so if, if tomorrow you rock up at AMP and there's an extra zero on your, yeah. your pay slip. Yeah, could so. be, could be. I was, I was more putting it to winning the lotto or something, <laughs> you know. So, uh, yeah, so when you start seeing me use Michael more, it's I've lis- finally listened to what this numerologist said. You're if, feeling like a bit of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah I need some money. <laughs> I yeah, I have a short name, so I never had a nickname, and now I'm in Australia. So Sean, I, yeah, so I, <laughs> that's like very new for me. Um, How do you but feel it's really about funny. it? Funny? No, I think it's great. I it's think okay. it's funny. Yeah, Sean be, bloody Australians just like destroying anything that seems like English. Like, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. We got to put an O or an E on the end of it, the name, and then you've then you then you're part of an Aussie. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> he feels feels welcome. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. How long have you been here for? Uh, two years now. Two years. Yeah. And I hear that you were uh, you were poached from overseas. <laughs> I don't know if I was poached. I, I asked if I could um, join AMP actually, uh, because I had been traveling back and forth probably since 2013, mm-hmm. doing a few projects with AMP. So um, a couple of exploratory projects to look at how Australians think about um, banking and uh, debt, how and how they think about protection, wealth protection, and insurance, mm. and then came back to do a project around the performance management system at AMP, and yeah, and that I got, I had a really good chance because I could study the company, and um, yeah, I met some great people there, met met someone here, so I have a partner here in Australia, so I asked AMP if I could come join them. Yeah, nice one, like the. So for those listening, uh, these gentlemen uh, are in what you might call the think tank of AMP. Like <laughs> it's, uh, there's, there's a subunit of innovation that um, I guess has been blossoming over the last few years and there's been some really cool stuff happening and a, a lot of stuff that um, that smaller businesses don't have the pleasure of doing has, has occurred and it's stuff that maybe um, is relevant for other people to understand and and learn and just sort of get an understanding of maybe some of the findings that you guys have had and what the journey's been like. So, like Mike, what, what's your, how long have you been with that program and what have you... Yeah, so I joined uh, AMP no, nearly five years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I... Uh, b- before that, I was uh, running digital at Citibank. So I've yep. been involved in digital, you know, for or internet before it was called digital. You know, I've been for it since about mid, early mid nineties. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I joined AMP at the, when they were at the start of the, the transformation, and I came across um, with a focus to help build out the digital capabilities of uh, the organisation. Yep. Um, AMP had recognised that they needed to, you know 
create a deeper connection with um, their with customers. Um, you know, their business was focused probably just solely on advisors, and we know mm. it's not that that the business was changing to focus on advisors, but knew that to be relevant in this ever changing world where technology, you know, was driving a change in cum- consumer expectation and behaviour, mm-hmm. they needed to be able to know how they were going to engage with um, you know customers of AMP. Um, so I came in, you know, four and a half years ago, and I think. Uh, um, I th- it was a, for me. It was a really exciting opportunity. In fact, one of the things was I I, I came into AMP because I saw an organisation that was really serious about um, taking a next step and changing. I think the word being customer centric and others to me was just a, a label that most were putting on. Um, but AMP had a real focus, and there were some things that I saw that made me really interested about coming to the organisation. One of it was the work that was sh- that Sean's been was referring to. Um, AMP was one of the leaders in Australia to start to really explore human centred design and how mm. do you apply that into getting really good insights into driving. Um, driving change. Well, I think the seriousness in businesses, or well, large businesses, is usually defined by how much money is put behind it. And yeah. they haven't been shy in, in backing backing the initiative that you guys are working on. That's a- yeah, well, I mean, the, the capital investment that AMP has been putting around the transformation is is been around knowing that they have to they have to define a, a new business model, mm. um, you know, that's going to serve them for another 170 years. AMP has got a really strong purpose. I mean, you know, the one thing I always find really um, interesting about the organisation is the sense of purpose. I mm. mean, the purpose was, um, you know, helping people live with dignity that then translated into helping people own tomorrow but it's a purpose that isn't just sort of taken lightly it's something Mm -hmm. that AMP and and the people that work within AMP and from executive all the way down go AMP served um, the Australian society for 170 years it needs to be around to continue to do that Um, and we need to be able to keep reinventing ourselves to be relevant so that we can continue to do the job that AMP believes that it's um, its purpose you know, within Australian society is. So I think it's a, a bold purpose and one that they all they believe in. Yeah, if you if you don't change how you do things, you're going to be left behind in this day and age. It's just it's just how things are. Like it's um, technology's there. People are expecting different experiences. Yeah, and like this is you guys are just um, I guess adapting and and like it's you, you look at a small business or smaller um, practices, you might say that need to adapt, it's quite easy for them to change. They go, okay, well, um, there's three or four advisors in the business, we're now gonna do this. And um, when you're talking about the size of AMP, scale change is huge, especially when you see it stretched down through systems and processes. And yeah. and I guess what you guys are dealing with is you sort of got a, you got a situation where to truly, and I think it all comes back to technology and efficiency and client experience. and. To get the most effective, efficient processes, they need to be standardized. And this is any any sort of business. Like if you don't have, like if you're dealing with multi different channels of ways things are done, and this is across the industry with advice, like it's it's so hard to uh, facilitate efficiency when you've got a whole lot of people doing different things. And when you've got an environment when people are doing different things, um, and but they 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 own that space or they change management with someone that's not um, employed, like it's hard enough when they're employed, yeah, yeah, let yeah. alone when they're not employed. Um, if you're not in a position to actually dictate certain levels of change, I guess you've got to create an uh, environment where it's an opt-in around um, a business model and about yeah. into a standard that maximises technology. Because that's yeah. I think yeah, yeah. what you guys have been doing is maximising technology and then, then you throw on top of it. So you can take the standard traditional business model of advice, making that easier to do. Yeah. But then you throw on top of it, you sort of got that, uh, what I think would be really interesting to hear more about, which is the, the client experience aspect. Mm. And, and like, so with, with, with the research, I want to hear some about, so some of this research, what are some of the things that has come up when you guys have done these focus groups, surveys, et cetera, that like was really, really came from left field or like was unexpected? Hmm. <laughs> Lots of unexpected things come up. Um, one thing I think, thinking about a, a recent experience was, you know, a lot of, so 
to, to your to your point, I think a lot of um, a lot of the uh, the experience of integrating technology into into this is about efficiency, mm-hmm. and you you achieve that scale by becoming much more efficient by making the by by recognizing a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. but but the power is really in then how do we make sure that they feel human? Mm. You know, it's like we can make this as efficient as possible, but it still needs to feel like an experience that's deeply human to people. And that could be anything in in how you present information. So a lot of times advisors today will show a lot of charts and graphs. And we did this test with customers where, you know, we basically show them a standard you know, chart that shows you how your cash flow is going to happen over over um, time, and it was so depressing to people. They referred to the cash flow line as the rail the railroad to death, um, because you're basically even this if you're is doing some of the a, terminology. Yeah, yeah <laughs> this is one of the customers because you know even if you're doing a great job and you're you're watching that line kind of go all the way. Oh, up this is when you're in pension phase and you're exactly. saying, yeah. you're optimizing. Oh yeah, so you can spend this much. So when you get to this age, you've got nothing left. Exactly. And yeah. I don't want to have nothing left. Is that what? Is that yeah, sort well, of I mean, <laughs> inherently, you're looking at something that appears negative, even if it's a positive thing. Even yeah. if you kind of like you ran out of money exactly on the day you die, it's still depressing to look mm. at. Yeah. So on one hand, it's really depressing to look at. On the other hand, it's intimidating because most people look at charts like that, and they don't know how to read charts, and mm. not in like a like they're dumb in a way where it's most people don't interact with financial graphs and charts all the time. Um, so one of the big changes we've actually um, took into our design was just by removing a vertical axis on that and showing the cash flow in terms of a number versus a line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you're not seeing that negative downward slope. You're looking at a timeline and mm. people intuitively... I was going to say maybe you flip it and it's like your journey to your final destination. <laughs> you're getting closer and closer. Yeah, you just yeah, put it yeah. up at the top right so yeah, it's going yeah. upwards. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah. I think... But you went for numbers on the way. Well, you see that uh, <laughs> people intuitively understand a timeline, mm. you know, and if you're looking at time and, uh, versus cash, it's just like we can show cash in a different way. We can just show them the timeline. And all of a sudden people are like, oh, now I'm talking about my life, my time. Mm. And they would, it seemed much more human. It was an intuitive thing for them to look at. It didn't feel like a chart. It just mm. felt like your timeline. And so that became sort of um, a centerpiece of one of the tools that we created. So people actually then say, oh, I when I look at that chart, I can't have a conversation. I need someone to explain this to me. When I look at the timeline, I feel like I can have a conversation about mm. that. It was mm. a big a big change and how just sort of start to surface some of the data to people so that they can actually have a conversation with us. So so that's sort of like the beta testing of people just sort of getting in and having a go. <laughs> what about like um, any surveys or data that you've brought, brought in externally, insights? Have you, have you worked with any universities or like what sort of... Oh, you probably brought in consultants, I guess, for different areas. Is that- yeah, we we explore many different areas. You know, and we're always looking for opportunities to sort of broaden um, both the way that we engage, but also to where we get the information, you know, the information from. I think mm. I think there's no shortage of information that you can sort of find in today, mm. right? If you're going looking for something, you're going to find something. I think it's about the the ability for people to be able to interpret that into information into something that's valuable. And obviously, one of the one of the things that Sean and his team do do uh, you know a really good job of is I always enjoy watching them as they work through the process to get to insights and look for those insights to then turn into ideas and then mm. those ideas getting get tested so that is a process in itself you know recognizing that and seeing that happening is you know there's one piece getting information there's other piece turning that information into something of value we'd have yeah. some uh, pretty creative types in there <laughs> I'm presuming well, yes. yes, you do, <laughs> and I think create creativity. Creativity is a word you know that I um, you know I like yeah. and like to explore because I think one of the things you know I anchor on a lot is the difference between creativity and innovation, mm-hmm. right? And I think it's a very um, important differentiation to make because mm-hmm. creativity is that it's the insights, the ideas, you know, that are going to that are, are going to be explored as opportunities to be able to let's say solve a problem. Innovation is much more complicated. Innovation is taking those and turning them into value. So mm. when we look at what we're doing with a- at AMP and we're taking, you know, the goals ad- advice and the goals experiences and we're, you know, we that is in itself was an insight, mm. you know, because when we started on the journey, we started at a customer transformation journey to get to, to get a get a better connection with with a- AMP customers. Mm-hmm. What came out of that was the connection people have with goals and they have a very personal and emotional connection with goals and, mm. and Sean and the team were the 
the ones who really started to extract that out and turn that into um, experiences as they started to challenge. Well, how do you take a goal? Because, you know, to say I can help you tra- um, achieve your goal is such a can be such a loose comment that it is meaningless, mm. right? And it can be something that can be misinterpreted as purely as an advertising slogan, right? And if you think about it, what financial services organisation isn't going to tell you they're there to achieve your financial goals? Mm. The reality is what sits under there to help you get there. Because if your goal, you know, is to educate your children, mm-hmm. right, um, in a particular way, or retire with a certain lifestyle. You know, the goal, that goal and the ability to deliver on that goal is you've got to have a lot of substance. So the insight on goals was really interesting, but then innovating that to an outcome is something that the team's working on. With the wording that you're saying, is that where, like, and that was an example before, I guess you're looking at the wording, what sort of wording has sort of been adjusted as well? Like during this, if you're thinking about goals, Mm. you're thinking about how you're describing um, life moments that people are aspiring to or... um, One of the biggest shifts that are yeah, one of the biggest changes we put into um, the latest iteration of the goals 360 experience is uh, we really tried to simplify sort of the conceptual layers in the experience because in the in an earlier iteration people would choose goals within that goal they had certain objectives then we talk about strategies and behaviors and products that mm-hmm. would support that it was like way too complex for mm-hmm. people people want to know what are my goals? Like, what do I want? And what do I need to do? What are my actions? And we're really trying to simplify the experience down to a point where it's like goals and actions. That's it. Um, What do you want? And how do, what do you need to do to get it? Okay. Um, And I think that's kind of a massive shift in how we start talking about it because from the- So what's changed since when, like when you first conceptualized things? Like how, what has that constricted from a wider experience, I guess? Or Mm. is that sort of- no, I think if anything, it well, it simplifies the experience yeah. because I think we are still doing all of that, all the, the strategies. Still there. The depth yeah. is still there, but what the customer actually sees is a much simpler experience, a much simpler language. Yeah. Um, they don't care about They just want to get the goal and they want to know what they need to do. We talk about strategies. We talk about, you know, behaviors, products, but they just want to know how do I get that goal? Mm. And so how do we hide a lot of the things that confuses or overwhelms them mm-hmm. and help them focus on what's really important. And, and I mean, earlier you asked a question about what what was one of the surprise or some surprises. And part of it was how um, some very financially literate people are scared to ask their advisor a question because they don't want to appear mm. um, stupid, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, the, the insight might be they might be sitting there the whole time and being talked to in a particular way um, and walk out and go... I didn't know what they were talking about in a particular thing, so and I didn't want to want to say that, so I didn't understand anything. So the, the work to sort of simplify the language, even all mm-hmm. the way far down, that it, there wasn't jargon, yeah. um, and even you used you looked at even how graphs and all that are presented, and you know some of us you know might love graphs, but mm. the, the way that it, people look at it and translate that as an insight, you know, it might not we be achieving the to, outcome. I guess you're trying to make it people proof because one of the biggest challenges is always just like. Because, yeah, people are so good at smiling and nodding. Like, it's mm. just it's a skill set that some people really mm. refine well. And then you're like, so, um, like, if you're checking in on people, and that, like, I think that's a real skill that um, a lot of advisors um, execute on yeah. and deliver because it's that reconfirmation. You can talk about all sorts of stuff. But if the client's not walking away, actually having understood what you sort of, you can still, you might still get the outcome. Hmm. But the client's not getting um, that consumer experience that would be ideal, which is like being comfortable and confident. Yeah. So I suppose this is what you're talking about. So if you're s- simplifying that, you can always layer on more complexity after or more technical if someone wants it. But if you start at the, at least the base, I guess you've sort of yeah. you're in a position where you, you're open for everyone mm. and the people that like that space mm. they can stay there mm. the people that want more complexity they can sort of opt up Is o- that sort of- over and over again in testing you see people talk about like if it's not if you're not approachable i don't care how much of an expert you are because mm. i'm not going to come up to you and ask you the questions we did one test with um we had we had customers create collages and one of the collages was what's it like to receive financial advice today um and the one that stands out in my head was this woman had a uh, an image of um, 
you know, someone at like a McDonald's, like grabbing a bag out of it. She's like, I, you know, I signed up to go get this thing. And then I'm in there talking to a guy. He talked at me for a while. And then I left more confused than when I went in. And that's like a really common experience <laughs> that we see across, across people. And then we ask them to make a collage around what should the experience of getting help achieving goals feel like? Mm -hmm. Completely different. You know, they have... Um, it should be architectured, it should be neat in delivery, it should be fun and rewarding, and it should be uh, a mindful and creative journey. Like these are the words that people actually said. And there's something about, you know, we don't often think about financial planning as this like creative or mindful or really, yeah, like a journey that you're on. Mm. But I think as we can automate some parts of this, it almost should free our minds to actually really think about and really become invested in what the goals we want to achieve and really be clear about what we want to do. A lot of times you bring couples in, they've never even talked about what their real goals are. Mm. So it's a really powerful experience because they're having conversations they don't normally have. Yeah, so that, that space, I guess the, the journey into the deeper sort of discussions and, and what happens before that, um, have you guys sort of, what sort of touch experience, touch points and experience have you sort of looked at there? Because like, yeah, you think about sort of some of so like a lot of advisors will, it's, it's more about the data capture. Mm. And if you can sort of park that, like we were talking about and like I'm a big advocate of like the new data feeds mm. that you can get through and like people log into the bank accounts, you pull that in all of a sudden mm. you've got their expenses for the last year, depending mm -hmm. on the account. Um, you know, a lot of their asset values mm. or their liability values. Cool, that's there. But how do you sort of prep people for these sorts of discussions? Do you mm. guys have touch points on the way into these meetings and what, what do they look yeah. like? Yeah, well, we've actually created two new roles within the, the advisor experience, the advice experience, one of them being a concierge. So it's not just a front desk, but mm. it's someone to help you throughout the journey, kind of be your touch person as you're coming in through the different parts mm -hmm. of the journey. If you have a question, someone you can ask, um, host you when you come. So mm -hmm. it's not about just like showing up and here's your appointment, but do you need coffee? Do we need to help you sign into your account? Anything we can do to help you just mm -hmm. get ready because that, that lifts that time off the advisor. Mm -hmm. We created a role that we have, um, we call the goals coach. And this is someone who is trained to actually really help people think uh, about what their goals are and really define, get clear and define what those goals are. Um, and so those people are trained in helping to coach people through that conversation and draw out of them, like not just what it is, but why is it important? Um, capture why it's important, help um, mediate conversations between between couples, especially when they're just getting into things that they haven't actually talked mm -hmm. about before. So these are very different, very human roles mm -hmm. um, that are important in helping to prepare for the advice conversation, but also lift that, um, make it more efficient for the advisor. So when people go in there, they've, they're at a state where we have, the, we have the data and we've already captured some of the data, but we also, they've thought deeply about what they want to talk about. Mm. Mm -hmm. They preposition that thought, all that line of thought, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, you know, we've got digital experiences where people today can just um, go to our website and go through a, a uh, smaller version of the, ex the goals exploration, mm. um, you know, the goals explorer, um, where they can start yeah, to set up. If anyone's listening, uh, Goals 360? Goals 360 is the experience. If they go to amp.com.au yeah. and just go through the goals, there's a, there's a goals um, link in the home, on the homepage. Okay. Then you'll be able to go through the goals. We call it the goals explorer light, you know. Okay. So, you know, we've got 29 goals at the moment that mm -hmm. are the, the key goals that um, have been identified and, and obviously that there's strategies put around those. But this Goals Explorer Lite just takes the top 13, top mm -hmm. 12 or 13, um, and allows um, someone just to go through the experience and go through thinking about their goals, selecting them, prioritising them, getting a timeline. And at the end of that experience, you know, while it's at an early version, it just gives them a bit of a insight in relation to things they could do. The mo most important point is that then um, links into their profile if they're a customer yep. that would then if if they later, logged into their uh, yeah if they logged yeah. into my MP they would and then from there it would link into um, an experience where if they wanted to go further into the AMP advice yep. world that would all connect through and then that that would start them on the journey. Well, I think like would it um, that experience like because it's all digital and it's all self opted that that in itself the analytics behind that and picking up the journey 
Um, is there anything that's surprising that's coming out of that? Like, you, you guys would have the information on where people, mm. what yeah, people yeah. select on the most. Like, what are, the, what are the more common goals that come up that maybe weren't, wouldn't, people wouldn't think of being, them mm. being? Is it, is it like pe- most people would go, like, um, oh, I just want to buy a home and, like, I'm about to have kids, I'm worried or whatever? Or? Yeah, there are probably things you could guess because they're not, like, the most common goals are, are pretty kind of standard. People want to buy a home, especially here in Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, simplify their finances. Simplify their finances and fix their cash flow, things like that. That, yeah. uh, that actually um, is, a, is a big deal for us because a lot of times people won't go see an advisor because they feel like their normal everyday cash flow isn't in a place where they're even ready to see mm. an advisor. So I think... I don't see it as like the actual part of the service is to get that to a better mm. space. Yeah, or some people feel embarrassed to go, mm. you know, basically show their like dirty underwear drawer to mm. this stranger and they could be embarrassed about it or they feel like they should, they need to get ready before they actually go see the advisor. So I think giving them the opportunity to see like, this is a goal and it's something we could help you with. Mm. Um, and we have tools that can help you with that and the advisor... Or we have a, a process that can help help people through that. So I would say, yeah, um, sort of. There's some cash flow related ones. Obviously, planning for retirement and, and figuring out like what do you do, how do you save for that. Um, buying a home is a, is a really popular one, and then um, making sure that your family is protected. So protecting your family mm-hmm. through um, whether it's insurance or or some other means. And how I guess so. Some of those. So the journey then from. Because a lot, yeah, a lot of a lot of businesses are trying to really orchestrate these sort of low touch points that sort of lead up to, I guess, more and more service, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So, like someone's gone through that website, they're then coming through. Um, they might have done the goals thing. They're getting a phone call, or they're going. They're getting shown certain emails. They're getting shown certain pop ups in the page. What yeah, sort of? Well, I mean, if you think about it, and look, I mean, you know, we're still building this through I think one of the one of the key things is you know the processes we um, not only design the experiences but build them and prioritize investments is it's it's a jigsaw puzzle mm. and you know we we know what the jigsaw puzzle needs to look like it's just about assembling the right pieces and then you know refining them as you move forward I mean if you think about it and let's let's take one and simplify your finances and I don't know if you know much about the AMP better account which is a yeah, um, yeah. a savings account it's Won three innovation awards in the last um, three months. It's uh, you know that's, with, that's like multiple accounts managed from or one technical one one bank account with like splitting it up with a tech in- interface on the top. Yeah, no, so it's yeah, so it's it, it's an app. You yeah. know, that's uh, there's actually three bank accounts linked to it, but there's an oh, engine there is three. Yeah, okay, yeah, that yeah, sits yeah. behind it, and um, it works around the principle. And you know, Sean was um, involved in. Um, the design of this from a um, customer research perspective mm-hmm. and we bucket our money yep. you know as we all know yep. pay spend save so um, there's a cycle we get mm-hmm. income coming in at regular points and mm-hmm. within that we've got to be putting money away to pay for the bills that are coming um, and I think a big part about that is the apportionment of bills that you're going to have due in six or twelve months that mm-hmm. are quite large taking a little bit out of each cycle to cover your bills to cover your um, savings goals that you set up and obviously knowing you've got money to spend Yep. Um, and then what do you then do with that money that's left over? Right, Because yep. if all your bills and your savings goals are covered, then you should feel more confident to put that money somewhere else mm. because it's not going to impact. Because I think the biggest concern you know people have is, well, if I start going and putting more money into superannuation, mm. what's it going to cost me? <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah right? Exactly. What am I losing today by putting it in there? I mean, you know, I always say, you know, you see actu- actuaries look at you and go, this compound interest thing, if you mm. just put this money aside in 30 years, going to be worth is but the human behavior is well what am i losing if i put that money aside Mm. today well what's the yeah and and, like it's a really good point what sort of work like if you're in part of that app what sort of wording are you using because this is sort of the language is so key Mm. in this whole journey like what sort of wording do you use to bring out that like especially when you're talking about an app it's so dependent on what wording comes up because right. there's no human involved. Obviously, with the human experience, you can orchestrate um, certain language as well. But like, what sort of? So is it like, oh, if you've accumulated in your bank, uh, your your spending account, you're like, ching ching, time to spend your money. Like, what right, sort of, right, right. What sort of signals are you sending out to people? To I mean, one thing we've done is within the within your save account, um, you can create multiple savings goals. So. You know, I can create a goal for a vacation or I could 
create a goal for a car. And mm-hmm. I think, you know, allowing people to create these sort of like separate mini goals and the app can automatically apportion the money into into those and however what you send it. Being able to include an image uh, mm-hmm. attached to those goals, like so when you can, you look at it and you're like, right, I'm saving for a car, that's a car. Um, if I'm saving for my kids, you know, school, it feel it's like feels weird to take money out of something, mm-hmm. you know, where there's an image attached to it um, to go spend it on something today. So there's there's little things like attaching images to things kind of it makes it more meaningful than just it being like words and a number. Yeah. So I think making things a lot more visual throughout all of our products, I think right now is, some, is sort of a, a really big theme in the goals experience. Same thing when you look at the timeline and you see your goals on a timeline, mm. you're not just, it's not just words. There's an image that represents it. You've named that, you've renamed that goal and whatever words make sense to you. Mm. It makes people feel like it's, it's theirs. They're taking ownership of it. So I think, yeah, linking to, sort of um, giving them some control over it and some personalization, it, it helps them start to own it um, and be less likely to discount the future. Mm. Yeah, nice. And if these experiences, you know, like for um, different demographics, you know, particularly if they're not ready yet to see a financial advisor, but their goal is to simplify the finances and we can use products like Better, you know, and our money manager services like the aggregation to sort of help them get control, then when they are ready to see a financial advisor, you know, mm. then that's that's the journey, you know, that life cycle management that, we'll, that all um, financial institutions want to, you know, build that relationship with a customer and have that for the life cycle. Mm. You know, easy thing, easy yeah. thing to say tougher thing to do still like lots of opportunities and i think we're so we're still at the beginning of this journey because the amount of data that's getting captured yeah well and also like i think as we were doing research for this i one of the exercises we did went out we just talked to kind of like who are people who help people achieve goals outside of financial advice so talk to a um a personal trainer um, a cycling coach, someone who uh, we, we interviewed someone who, who re- rehabilitates prisoners um, into society because it's like there are people, they, there are ways that they adjust their style, their tone. Mm. Um, you know, pers- the personal trainer was saying sometimes you have someone that's all about positive reinforcement. Sometimes you just got to go in there and kick their ass constantly. And that's what motivates them. So I think there's a lot of opportunity. And as we start refining these experiences, like how do we dial up and dial down personality? Where does it make sense to, you know, um, be sarcastic or funny or or just straight talk? You know, I think mm-hmm. I think those are the things that um, as we start refining the experiences and there's there's a lot of opportunity to personalize as we get into this. Yeah, well, it's, uh, what would you say? So obviously, um, there's some more ready ready to go sort of products that've been developed. Um, if someone was just trying to sort of orchestrate um, some of the experiences that you guys have been talking about, what would you what would you recommend that they it, like in a, in a sh- like just short and sharp? What what would you tell them so they don't um, spend too much time? What what would you get them to focus on and prioritize over like? You could get caught up in all sorts of stuff here. Like, what what would you think would be most effective if you said to an advisor, if you looked at this really hard and focused on that area? Um, this was the cut through that we got a lot more out of. I mean, for me, I think when you, you the, the, the way um, a, a small business or a business could take what we've been talking about is I think the key thing and one of the things um, maybe I'm just getting older, but you're learning is you don't know it all, you know, and you think you do. You, you mm. think that you're solving the problem that you think is the problem that needs to be solved. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the way and sort of challenging how you're thinking about how you're solving a problem and taking mm. a step backwards. Um, so get out of yourself a bit more. Yeah, I mean, get out of yourself or who... who get over yourself. Yeah, that, yeah. that's probably applicable to a <laughs> well, lot of people as well. Well, well, <laughs> well, well, one of the things that we do a lot of work on and, and that starts at the early stages is that problem statement is, well, what are the problem you're trying mm. to solve? And then, you know, talk to people and really try and understand is that the real problem because you'll you'll talk to people and and people are so determined that they know the solution you know and particularly when I look at the other the team that we run the digital team you know a lot of people come out here's the solution let's build this now let's do this right Mm -hmm. now because we know Um, and taking that step backwards to sort of really go well okay before we do that let's really understand Mm -hmm. now naturally most people don't want to do it and I think one of the parts that Sean and his team always uh, get frustrated when is everyone just wants to rush forward so i mean yeah, for me it's so much enthusiasm 
Well, we, we don't just came up with the best the idea. I know yeah. the answer. Yeah. We're, we're, we're the smartest people in the room. We know the answer. Um, but who's taking that step back and giving you that other view? And you know what? Sometimes it should not be you because you could go and talk to 10 customers yourself, mm. right? But what oh, you're going to do... selling the dream. Oh, you're yeah. going to influence yeah, it. And you're going to listen to what yeah. you, you want to hear and totally. you'll come out with the answer that you want. But get someone else who can go in there who's going to really sort of challenge and give you a different insight. So think about the problem you're trying to solve in your business right now. Mm. Look at... What what solution that you think and even your team think that you're doing to solve that and now go, all right, what if we ask someone else to come here yeah, bring someone and else have in. a look at that? Do you think they're going to say the mm. same thing? It'd be an interesting exercise. I would probably think from experience and Sean, you'll, you'll give more insight because yeah. this is his expertise. I would actually think in most times, if nothing else, you'll be amazed about what you find. Mm. Yeah, I think that's true. I think also for... For us, even with our clients and, and any small business and advice, it's like start small. Because I think um, one of the things that customers kind of come back with is with advice, you go in, you see an advisor and like, boom, you're planning out your entire life. And that's, that's like intense to take oh, yeah. in. I just met this guy. I don't know who you are. I don't really know what you do. I don't, I'm not an expert in this. You are. So people have, they can be really intimidated when they go in and then mm -hmm. we try to plan out their whole life. And mm -hmm. that's kind of, that freaks them out. That's that's in that context, but even in, in like a personal context, we're looking at how people do budgeting, and it's like doing a full budget feels like so much work to people. Mm. It feels overwhelming. Like I've got to clear my calendar for a weekend and figure out where all my money goes. Mm. So you know, one of the features we've been working on is how do you help people do like a micro budget? Like most people kind of know where their bad spots are. Like mm -hmm. I spend too much money on Uber, <laughs> so if I can just watch this one track this one spend yeah. and maybe just set up a target for that one spend rather than a full budget mm. maybe i can grow that budget over it's time it's not as daunting looking at all my spending and going mm. oh i've got a like yeah. it's just it's aggregating everything you're like well ah well ah oh, this this component that's okay i'll spend on that mm. and then you start if you're not targeting you make it easy for people to identify I mean, we're in the business of helping people. It's like this is a journey throughout people's entire life, and we need to be with them throughout that life, and we need to build a relationship over time. So I think if we scare people away right away by mm. trying to build out their entire life and plan everything, mm. it yeah, it, I think it's, um, it is scary for people because they know it's really important. They want to do the right thing. They're not sure if they can trust you, and trust is really at the center of so much of this. Mm. So... Um, whether they're dealing with someone else or even being like self-serving, I think um, finding a way to get them to start small and make, you know, see some small piece of progress. See the same thing when I talk to personal trainers, like what's something I can help you get? Like what's one goal we can help you get to where you'll mm. see and notice a result. You'll gain build some confidence, momentum. build momentum. You'll get, you'll get hooked. Totally. And I think that's what we need to be. Much well, you're saying with. you're saying that with number of advisors breaking down the process, sort of starting to position um, like multiple meetings and really sort of orchestrating that experience mm -hmm. to make sure you're not rushing things and not um, ending up with people coming out the other side with with not having discussed certain things that probably would have been useful to discuss with the client. So, yeah, yeah. Mm. This has been great, guys. It's uh, We only have so much time. Yeah. And it's been great for you to come down and uh, share your experiences. It's it's some cool stuff. Uh, I'm glad. I hope hope everyone got some something out of this out there. And, uh, yeah, you can just wander down to the goal store and just, like, um, get a bit of an experience if they let you in. I don't know. So. <laughs> yeah. Still going through quite a lot of work. I mean, you know, I know at the last advi AMP advisor conference it was profiled and, you know, many people were very interested. And I think it went from a point where AMP has been talking about it for many years and I mm. think everyone's like, well, sh you know, show me this thing. And then all of a sudden stuff, stuff, they stuff. were showing them more. Um, but I think the key thing about this and, and the, the journey that AMP on and by means it's not for every advisor but it's AMPs um, you know redefining their own business model as mm. they as they put goals at the centre it was never going to be an easy journey and I think you know we I know I take um, you know solace in knowing that it's not an easy journey because then it's not an easily replicated journey or it's not something True. that someone's just going to come out tomorrow and go wow someone's AMPs over there really helping people achieve the goals let's get our marketing department together and yeah. start attacking them on that piece because the amount of effort 
and time. And you're just listening to someone like Sean and seeing the amount of insights that's come from hundreds and hundreds of hours of working through stuff. It's it's exciting, and we're 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 hopeful. We're we're excited about being at the forefront of um, you know helping a lot more Australians and a lot more advisors, and you know getting um, more people into advice because we know that when people are in there, they're going to have a better outcome and a better future. So um, you want more people to get to that point. So it's pretty exciting. I'm I'm excited by the journey A and P's on. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see how things like every year there's going to be more cool stuff coming out. So watch this space. Yeah, watch watch definitely watch this space. It should be interesting. Mike and Sean, thanks cool. for coming on. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Cheers.